Hey everybody, it's Gary Garrick. I thought I'd let you guys see the new toy I just purchased, the 2012 Dodge Challenger SXT. Okay, so this is the 2012 Dodge Challenger SXT. I got this on um, February 23rd, which was Thursday. Uh, I bought this from a Dodge dealer that I will not name in um, Pennsylvania. And the reason I will not name them is because while the salesman was a really great guy, uh, the general manager I thought was a shady fucker, and I didn't like him very much. Now, those of you that know me know that I own two Mustangs, a 2012 5.0 all in black, and I also own a 2012 white premium V6 pony package edition. And I've decided to piss away all of my money on buying cars, so I decided I wanted a another car so I bought the Challenger and I'm also going to be purchasing a um, Camaro uh, probably in the next couple of weeks so um, and those of you that think that the movie business is doing good actually the movie business sucks <laughs> I still love making movies though but we're not getting rich from doing it I just have a really good paying job so this is the walk around of the vehicle as I said this is a 2012 uh, right now the odometer reads 381 miles. It had 9 on it when I picked it up. Um, but of course I had to drive it about 120 some miles home. Now this vehicle, as I said, is a 2012. It contains the 3.6 liter V6 engine that produces 305 horsepower. And I will show you the engine in a little bit. This car comes equipped with a leather wrapped steering wheel, a leather wrapped gear shifter, 18 inch wheels, uh, come stock. It has a uh, radio controls and the Bluetooth for your cell phone. It has all of the controls on the steering wheel. It also comes with a year subscription to uh, Sirius XM radio for uh, free, uh, which I will not be keeping after the one year because I really don't listen to the radio that much, but I have been enjoying it. Now, the stock tires on this are an 18-inch tire. Um, they are an R-rated tire, so the vehicle's fuel cutoff is at about 120 miles an hour. They are 235-55R18s by Michelin. As you can see, this is a very big car. Um, trying to back up a little bit to give you a wide angle. I actually am a very big Mustang fan, but I am also a major fan of the Challenger because the Challenger um, closely resembles the original car very much so. So in terms of the remake of the classics, this car is without a doubt one of the best in terms of recreating a classic. So let me take a quick minute here and I'll open up the hood and show you guys what's under the hood. And then I'll also show you the interior after that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Maybe a little hard to see because it's very sunny out today. And the hood, of course, creates a massive shadow. Um, kind of parked the car in the wrong direction. But this is the uh, engine bay of the 2012 Dodge Challenger. As you can see it has a 3.6 liter variable valve timing engine. It runs on 5W30 motor oil. A little hard to see but I'll try to zoom in and hopefully it gets a focus for you but if it doesn't it does say SAE 5W30. It runs on uh, a Dexcool coolant which is good for 100,000 miles. This vehicle produces 305 horsepower, and this particular one came equipped with the 306 rear axle ratio. It has a 5-speed automatic transmission with auto stick, so you can treat it like a stick shift if you want. This is a very heavy vehicle. This car, again, weighs 4,950 pounds from the factory, and uh, so believe me, the motor is more than ample to get it moving, but it doesn't move like you would expect as compared to say the V6 Mustang which because the Mustang weighs 3200 pounds uh, that V6 that produces the same horsepower as this engine but is 0.1 liters bigger uh, actually would cream this thing in a straight line run but the body lines on this car are just sexy as hell and it's worth having so let's take a look in the interior Okay, this is the interior of the 2012 Dodge Challenger. I'm very anal about my interior, so I always keep the uh, floor mat papers when they deliver a car <laughs> in place. Um, here is the steering wheel control panel I was talking about. There's the controls for the vehicle information center. 
the Bluetooth and voice recognition, and over there is your cruise um, control system for the vehicle. Now, on the back of the steering wheel, a little hard to see, but if you can see that button that's about right here, that uh, controls the station tuning for your vehicle, and on the other side of the steering wheel, on the right-hand side is the um, uh, sorry, the one on the left controls your uh, preset stations, the one on the right controls your seek uh, left and right, and also controls the power on and off as well as your vol volume. Uh, this is the gauge cluster to this vehicle, uh, as you can see, has the 140 mile speedometer package. This vehicle does not have the push button start, that is just a standard screen that they put in all Dodge Challengers. Um, but it's a very simple, you don't have to sit and hold the key to start it, you just put the key in, turn it a click and it'll start right up. This vehicle is also equipped with a more higher end radio than your standard one. The radio does have Bluetooth capabilities, I do have my iPhone connected to it. And it produces, I believe, 150 watts of audio power, maybe 130, um, I have to do a little more research on it, I don't have the window sticker with me at the moment. That is the gauge cluster to run your air conditioning system, and it is set to temperature control. You can put it in auto mode, and it'll circulate in different modes throughout the vehicle. This is a very, very roomy car, as you can see in the pictures. I always got my Mountain Dew and my butt can, because I am a smoker. I do not smoke in the car with the windows up. I have to smoke in the car. The windows either have to be down, or I'll pull over and just get out of the car and smoke. This is a cloth interior uh, vehicle. I chose the cloth because... The leather upgrade package was nearly a $5,000 additional price on the car. Uh, back seat's a little hard to see at the moment, but my leather jacket's back there. and uh, As you can see, it's got a lot of room. My Deadlands 2 hat, because I'm very proud of that movie, and I, in fact, all my movies. And then you have the back window view. But again, very roomy car. Leather wrap stick, sh uh, excuse me, shifter for the automatic. There's the auto stick function. And then the leather wrapped steering wheel. If this would have had the leather interior, it would have had the heated leather seat. It does come with a power driver seat, two-way, uh, but it's manual for reclining the um, back. But the button there is for your lumbar support. It comes with power windows, power locks, power mirrors. Uh, it only has the auto down function, not auto up. Now, this vehicle, these come with a standard amount of stickers. This one does happen to have the HID headlamps. Uh, I, I do not have the navigation camera display or the video display option in this car. And there's some uh, specs for the tires so that you can see some information. It says it can seat five. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> this car is what's called a pitch black package. And it lives up every bit of it. So here's the door sticker. This car was dated, built. It was built on... January of 2012. The dealer only had it three days before I bought it. Uh, a little hard to see, but because the camera is going a little out of focus here, it's uh, 4,950 pounds. Move out a little more. Sorry. 4,950 pounds of weight on this car. This also came with the chrome fuel door. I'm not sure if that's a standard option with these or not. I've seen them with the black uh, or where they match the color of the body. I kind of prefer the chrome look to it. Uh, it just makes it look a little better. And here's a little bit more of a close-up of the rims that come standard on this vehicle. Now, I just had this car washed and waxed, so I thought the dealer did a crappy job clear cleaning it up, so I ended up taking it down to a car wash in Gaithersburg, Maryland, where I live, and for 40 bucks, they do a hand wax job, which includes their ultimate wash, um, which is you get the tire dressing, and they do a really good job on the interior and the windows. So, all in all, that is my 2012 Challenger. I'm not going to show you the trunk because I have a lot of stuff in the back because I do travel back and forth for work, but this is not going to be my primary work car. I still have my little 08 Cobalt for that. So, you got to tour my new 2012 Challenger SXT. And um, at the end of the video, I will try to list some of the options or at least put it in the information bar on YouTube. So thanks and hope you enjoyed the vid. Uh, a couple things I wanted to show you. This is the key system for this car. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And uh, basically there's the clips. Dropping everything here. And that's it.
stock number 2012 Dodge Challenger black now I'll show you this is this does not have the push button button start you just put the key into this fob hole here and that's your accessory run mode and this is what the dashboard looks like when it's fired up this switch down here is what operates gotta forgive my dirty fingernails um, was doing work on my cobalt today so that changes your vehicle's system display so right now it's the system okay uh, these buttons here control the functions for that display system but that little button there with the notepad on it is what changes your information display personal settings you can display the units in US or Canadian or excuse me uh, metrics uh, the display eco mode this car will run on economy mode when you're not pressing it so when you're just doing a light cruise um, you can turn it off but otherwise it puts that little ECO on your display when you're in it uh, I have it turned off because it annoys me economy and a Dodge Challenger should not be in the same sentence uh, it's currently 40 degrees so you have your thermostat uh, you have two trip settings there's a uh, trip B with um, 80.5 miles on that that is when I last filled up and as you can see I only used uh, about a little less than an eighth of a tank uh, back to vehicle info this has a 0 to 60 timer when you are trying to see what your line time is so I thought that was a pretty cool function and it does have a digital readout for the uh, speedometer because you know we always need two and uh, let's see, go to system OK. The personal settings, I didn't go through all of it yet. So we have the eco mode. Then we have the keyless enter and go, uh, which I have activated with this car. It has hill start assist, um, which is I have set to on. It just helps give you a little more push off the line. Um, delay power off to accessories until exit. So basically, if you turn the key off, the radio and everything will work for 10 minutes. You can change it up to 30 minutes. My headlamps are on when I unlock the car and they stay on for 90 seconds uh, because it's kind of a little on the dark side in some of my neighborhoods in terms of the lighting and um, and I do park under a tree so you know all the extra light I can get is great. Uh, the headlamps I have set to off for 30 seconds because it shouldn't take me that long to get out of the car, lock it and start walking to my front door. Flashlights with remote key lock. This uh, flashes the headlights and the parking lights as well as the tail lights. Let me know the vehicle is locked. And it does sound the horn as well. Sorry for the shakiness. I've had too much caffeine this morning. Now I have my remote key to unlock all doors on the first press. You can change it to it only locks unlocks your driver's door. And the unlock doors automatically on exit. That's set to on so when I grab the handle the doors unlock. And the doors will lock automatically at 15 miles an hour and I have that set to on. I'm usually already ahead of that by locking the doors the minute I get in and start. Uh, I of course have the language set to English and then we're back to that personal menu. Now I usually either leave it left leave it setting on this setting or if the radio is on it'll tell you what channel you're on. I'm on the satellite system. I prefer 80s on 8 most of the time, Hair Nation or Octane Rock. So there's 80s on 8. I have 70s on 7. And 90s on 9 as some of my presets. But you can do a lot of uh, presets with this vehicle, which is great. It's kind of interesting. It's a fun toy. But uh, that's pretty much the system here, you know, aside from the cruise. Oh, this button system back here. I'm pushing up now. You can see the volume going up. And now you can see the volume going down. And there's a middle button uh, right about behind the, res the resume switch. And that will shut the radio down. And that's, as you can say, the 2012 Dodge Challenger SXT.